live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. That's my message. I deliver it every morning. We have a very focused show, though. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. And then remind you, if you ever have any home or finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. While I do have a great team, when it comes to delivering a financing plan, a plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. Celebrating National Peanut Day today. Not, we're not looking for Jimmy Carter right now. Just National Peanut Day. Getting ready, though, for tomorrow's National Cream-Filled Donut Day. I think I'd rather go with tomorrow, National Cream-Filled Donut Day. That one sounds like a good option to me. I'd like to, I'd like to go and, and check that one out myself. Uh, yeah, I've got a little, you know, I've beaten anorexia, so donuts are something that I am a very, very, I, 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 I study those a lot. They're, they're good for you. So we'll chat about National Cream-Filled Donut Day tomorrow. Watching the markets this morning, yeah, they're a little bit, turbulent down 240 points on the dow jones oil down one dollar 33 cents a barrel that will translate over to the national gas prices from AAA. two dollars 17.8 cents a gallon on the national scale 274.1 right here in the state of confusion basically the same price leading the country highest price in the country as hawaii so uh, 274.1 here in the state of confusion. Not fun notes there. Then we're going to look at the 10-year treasury because we can. It is up again, which is very abnormal. We generally do not see the 10-year treasury going up at the same time, the yield on that going up at the same time as we see the stock market going down. Generally, they're going to move. If the market is down, the yield on the 10-year treasury will be down as well. If the stock market is up, the yield on the 10-year treasury frequently goes up. The reason being, when people are selling, that's what brings the stock market down, people selling off their holdings in the market, where are they putting their money? They want to put it into something safe and secure, and they look at the 10-year treasury as being that safe, secure vehicle. They buy the bond. More demand for the bond means the bond price goes up, yield goes down, and that's what we use to watch for the 30-year fixed rate loan. Again, add 1.76 to the 10-year treasury. Give you basically an idea of what the 30-year fixed rate loan should be on a historic basis. We did note that the 30-year fixed rate Freddie Mac mortgage market survey came back. 3.44% was that 30-year fixed rate. 3.44% with average paying 0.6 points to get that rate. So think about that one. Very interesting watching, and we're going to chat quite a bit about this today, about questions to ask a mortgage broker why getting pre-approved should be your first step. And obviously, you always want to be dealing with a mortgage broker, not with the big banks. And you see what's happening with Wells Fargo in the news right now? Not a pretty sight over there. But give you an idea of what's going on, some, some financial planning for you watching what is happening in the marketplace for you. But we'll get into that a little bit later in today's broadcast. 
Checking out the NFL once again, watching what's going on over there. Brandon Marshall. I suggested these type of things were going to start happening that you can't insult the mass majority of the people and think that it's not going to have some sort of repercussion. So Brandon Marshall says he has no regrets kneeling for the National Anthem ahead of the Broncos game. And I'm sure that Air Academy Federal Credit Union probably has no regrets in cutting off their endorsement agreement with Brandon Marshall. CenturyLink now comes out and says they have cut their agreement with Brandon Marshall. Good for those companies. I, I applaud those companies. They both came out, or CenturyLink had a, had a comment, and they, I, I really ap- appreciate their comment. We completely respect, I quote, we completely respect Brandon Marshall's personal decision and right to take an action to support something in which he strongly believes. They go on, quoting, America is anchored in the right of individuals to express their beliefs while we acknowledge Brandon's right We also believe that whatever issues we face, we also occasionally must stand together to show our allegiance to our common bond as a nation. In our view, the National Anthem is one of those moments. For this reason, while we wish Brandon the best this season, we are politely terminating our agreement with him, unquote. I applaud CenturyLink. Yes, both parties have the right to... Holy cow, we got a loud studio audience today, don't we? Yeah, they're, they're a little, little loud today. Uh, but, but the bottom line is that both parties have their rights. I, I chuckled when I saw one of the uh, athletes came out over the weekend and made a comment that, or it might have even been yesterday, that the audience, because as we move right along, the fans at... Uh, the, the 49ers and Rams game, when they got Kaepernick off the bench, you know, he's, he's just a bench warmer now, that he came in for the last two minutes and 21 seconds of the game. The crowd at Levi Stadium, his home field, started booing him and then chanting USA, USA, USA. Booing Kaepernick. I applaud them. And then one of the other people in one of the post games says they shouldn't do that well let's scratch our head there a little bit and see if we can understand this so Kaepernick has the right to sit down or take a knee during the national anthem and uh, disrespect our flag disrespect our country yet the fans there don't have the right to boo him and let their voices be heard as well does that make any sense to anybody shouldn't it be that if one has that right everyone has that right obviously and and I, i had this conversation late yesterday with somebody the first amendment is there to protect people for saying stupid things things that you don't agree with so think about this content the the if, he, if everybody agreed with everything, you wouldn't need a First Amendment. If everybody was copacetic, if everybody thought the same way, the, there, there would be no need for these, these issues to go on. So that's why we have a First Amendment, so that people can disagree with each other and have that right to disagree. Now, when you disagree, I do not agree with the, I'm going to say it, the jerks that went to... Uh, Lochte at, at Lance Dancing with the Stars and rushed the stage yesterday. That's not the right way of expressing your feelings. That's not our, our system. So the being rushed by protesters, that should not happen. There, people need to say, you know something, if you don't agree with the man, don't support what he does. What CenturyLink did And what the credit union did with Brandon Marshall, to me, that's perfect. Marshall says that he wants to make a stand. I wonder where he was last year and the year before and what he's doing other than sitting down during the the national anthem. But that's an appropriate way of showing your displeasure with something in our system. The issues of what what these people did with Lochte rushing the stage, that's not appropriate. Don't support him. Don't go to the Dancing with the Stars. Don't watch the show. Don't support the sponsors of the show. 
But you know something? Rushing the stage, that's not appropriate. I don't think those people really cared about Lochte anyway. I think it more it was more about them getting their 10 minutes of fame, and now they've got – hopefully they'll get charged. I know they were, they were arrested yesterday. Hopefully they'll get their three square meals and a cot, and that'll be the solution to that problem for them and get that – problem solved as well. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we will be chatting about questions you must ask when choosing a mortgage broker, things you should think about. Why getting pre-approved should be your first step. Worst things to buy during the holidays, and is it too late for that debt consolidation loan? We're going to talk about all of those items when we come back. You can reach us anytime, our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio, on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We will be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. What if your family business could help clothe a less fortunate family? Or your restaurant could feed truly hungry people? What if you could help to comfort the lonely? Plant sustainable resources where nothing has ever grown before. Or make a child's lifelong wish come true. What if all you had to do was simply do nothing more than what your business already does every day? Would you do it? Introducing Processing for a Cause, a unique program that turns a percentage of your business's credit card volume into ongoing donation dollars for nonprofit organizations and foundations. Simply switch your credit card processing provider to Processing for a Cause and begin supporting a worthy cause today. The process is simple and the cause will change lives forever. Processing for a Cause. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message and as your consumer advocate. I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area-trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, text PAIR 
P-E-A-R to 79564, P-E-A-R to 79564. One of the real estate professionals will reach out to you and get you the true equity position of your real estate. So here's the question we have for today to discuss, four must ask questions when choosing a mortgage broker, mortgage banker. Now I'm the big believer that you wanna be using a mortgage banker, not a mortgage broker. There is a bit of a difference. A mortgage banker is going to close your loan in their name as opposed to in the name of the lender. Why is that important to you? Well, the reason being is if they're closing in the name of the lender or the investor, the appraisal, one of the biggest issues, the appraisal is being ordered in the name of that investor or that lender. If they need to switch midstream, you can't do it without going and getting a whole new appraisal and starting all over again. If you find out that one of the guidelines has changed or one of the guidelines was missed or something in your file. When you you do a loan application, here's the thing. When you're doing a loan application, that is basically a starting point. That's where the whole process starts. Then what happens is after that is done, that's called, we call that kind of discovery. Put everything that we can on the loan application. Then the teams go and they start verifying everything. Nowadays, everything is verified. So you look and you verify income. You verify employment. You verify all the assets. and the You, you do things that are, are seen and things that are behind the scenes as well. All of this is going on at the same time. So... A lot of that, when you dis- when you go through all that verification process, sometimes there are items that are discovered that say, you know something, we have to move it from investor A to investor B, and a mortgage banker can do that seamlessly. You don't even have to, you don't, probably don't even know about it happening, but they just do that seamlessly. One of the other issues, and, and this goes for both the banker and the broker, and is a big difference from the brick and mortar, the big bank on the corner, is the mortgage banker, the mortgage broker, they make all of their money. They only make money if your file is closed, if they get you the loan that you need, that you you accept and you agree to. They don't make money any other way, so they've got to do their jobs the right way to get you what you need. So here are some questions that you should be asking in the evaluation process. How does your application process work? What's the average time to close? I've been looking at some some files. I, I've shared with you recently that we've been promoting or pushing our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage. They're doing a great job. File got to underwriting and was out of underwriting in about 48 hours just recently. In about uh, the, the longest time period that things are taking with them right now, is they have a couple that you've got a three day waiting period once the closing disclosures go out and a three-day waiting period on refinances if it's your primary residence. That's the longest delays in the whole process. They're finishing things in, in probably three weeks is what it looks like. The appraisal, you got a week for the appraisal, but there's a lot of other things going on along at the same time. But three weeks is pretty common over there with what I'm seeing right now. How, how does your, pro- your process work? Third-party fees and lender fees in an estimated fee sheet. Get a hold of those. Again, over at Gold Star, they have no lender fees. So that one's pretty simple. You can't put that on a fee sheet, zero. Third-party fees are uncontrolled. That's going to be your title, your escrow, your appraisal, government fees, those type of issues. Cost and timeline to lock in a mortgage rate. You should not be paying for a loan lock. Now, you're going to get, it's going to be a hidden fee because the investors are all going to say, okay, well, if you want us to lock the money or tie up these funds or reserve these funds for you, if you want it done for 30 days, it's going to cost, they're going to build a a certain amount into the interest rate. If you want it for 45 days, there's going to be another amount built into the interest rate. 60 days are going to get you another amount built into the interest rate. Specific loan product requirements for credit score, debt to income ratio, and down payments. Just understand those issues. There are benefits for a 760 FICO score with specific investors. Not every investor has a price break there. Most of them have something at 740, but you also see them at 720 and 680 
But the ideal ones, if you can get that 760, boy, that's a good one right there. Debt to income ratio, some are going to say they're going to hold tight at the 43. Some will go to 45, 49. FHAs, you can get a little higher than that, even depending upon the situation. Can you upload documents and check your loan process? Those are issues, or how? what's the communication standards? I'm a big believer. I love this, the way they say, what documents are needed at each point in the loan process and deadlines for submitting them. I'm a big believer in, in, in simple. And the reason I say simple is I want to have all of the documents up front as much as possible. I look for the, the mortgage banker who has a checklist. And that way you can go down the checklist and you know that if you didn't supply something at the very beginning, eventually it's going to be needed. But have that conversation. And if you get that checklist, then you're going to understand the fact of, of you're going to probably need less documentation. There's going to be less back and forth throughout the process. And I think maybe that's why over at Gold Star they seem to be getting so many files done so quickly is because they're asking for the documentation up front instead of saying one piece at a time later on. Companies used for home loan services such as appraisal, title insurance, escrow. You can shop around for many of these services. Appraisal is something that is one that you really can't. Title insurance and escrow, you can shop for them. I'm going to suggest it's probably not in your best interest to shop around for them. Main, here's the main reason. Number one, if, it's, if you're doing a purchase, in most instances, the seller in Southern California is going to have the right to select the, the title and escrow service providers. Now, yes, I know we've got the Buyer's Choice Act in California, which says the buyer has the right to select those. But in practicality, even though the buyer does have the right the seller does not is not forced to accept your offer when you put that in there. So just remember that portion of it. Now, when you're in a buyer's market, you might find that there's more flexibility there than when there's a seller's market. You also might find that if the seller chooses to use an agent that understands what they're doing, they price the property properly and get a bidding war going. That way there's no negotiations or minimal negotiations between buyer and seller. The negotiations are between buyer and buyer. They're trying to fight each other to get the property that they want. So then you're going to have less options as a buyer because you're, you're comp it's competing. So what rate, what kind of experience do you and your team have is another question. How accessible and prompt are they? Do they have a support team or work alone? In other words, who will you be dealing with most of the time? How long have they been in the business? Ask for references. Are they comfortable communicating the way you do? They should be asking you, do you, want to, do you prefer communicating by phone, by email, by text, by chat? How is your preferred preference of communication? Do they provide straightforward answers that are clear and concise? You know, those are all real important issues. I found a very interesting, and I, I, I go back to this, this uh, example many times. A friend of mine was buying a second home out in the Coachella Valley, and I asked him how he found the real estate agent he used. He said, well, it was the only one out of seven that answered the phone. The only one out of seven that answered the phone. Not answering the phone, that's a pretty uh, significant issue when you're talking about one of what might be your largest real estate transaction, your largest financial transaction in your life. Got to know what rate you can get. So here's, a, here's an interesting issue because I hear this one all the time. People call and say, where, are the, where should the rates be? Well, the rates change as frequently as the stock market changes. If you've ever followed the stock market or done anything in the stock market, you'll note that it changes. While I'm, right while I'm saying this to you, I've got the market up on my computer screen, and it's changing every couple seconds while we're, while we're chatting. So if I click over to interest rates, it says that the 10-year treasury is at 1.73. Earlier in the day, it was at 1.70. The Dow Jones was down 249 when I said this. Now it's down 251. The numbers change all the time. So if you're going to go and do price shopping, 
Number one, I, I believe that price shopping should be a secondary issue because the biggest, you're not going to see a lot of variances in prices. You're going to probably see maybe an eighth here and there. But the issue of an eighth of a point on most loans is not a significant amount of money when it comes to your interest rate. But over the life of your loan, the life of your financial experience, having the right individual, the right team working with you is probably more than that $20 a month. They're probably going to get a lot more value having them watch your loan, talk to you, communicate with you on a regular basis after your loan is closed. You can go to the Walmart of lending and you'll probably get the service of Walmart. They may not report your information properly to the bureaus. They may not do a lot of these different things. They may not keep you updated with what the market is doing on a regular basis. They may not let you know that there's opportunities maybe to buy or sell new properties in your area. Interesting information right there. Will I even qualify for a mortgage if I have bad credit? That's a big issue. You go into the bank on the, on the corner, they're probably going to say you don't qualify. The mortgage banker, the mortgage broker, as I've shared with you before, they only get paid if they were if they if they are successful. If you close a loan. So you might need to be looking and saying, okay, what's the game plan to get a loan? Maybe I should get a loan now, work on my credit, get a get the investor or the lender, the mortgage banker to help get your credit scores increased and then restructure again. If you've got the FHA loan or the VA loans, those are a couple of areas where you get can get some Take advantage of the market today, and if the market gets better, if you're working with somebody that's following the market on your behalf, they're going to let you know that, hey, on that VA loan, you only need two or three documents to get that interest rate reduction. Great information right there. Again, that's the real-time real estate segment brought to you by the area-trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, why getting pre-approved should be your first step before you even speak with a real estate professional. Worst things to buy during the holidays. And is it too late for that debt consolidation loan? We're going to chat about all of that and more. You can reach us anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio, on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home you you're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details, 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender, licensed under NMLS number 217037. Your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. 
Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Do you own real estate or have assets over $150,000? Do you know one of your heirs will be the probate courts and the IRS? If you don't have a living trust, you will go through probate. Call Heritage Financial Services toll-free at 1-855-434-7400 for a free review. Check us out on Facebook, Heritage Financial Service in Lake Forest, California. That's 1-855-434-7400. Again, 1-855-434-7400. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990 800-306-19. 1990, the Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by Gold Star Mortgage. When you are ready for that first home or next home, Gold Star has the programs, the projects, or the products available. They meet all of your different needs. They're they're, they're sitting there waiting, ready for you, ready to assist you in getting that new home. So the question today, why getting pre-approved should be your first step. It's amazing how many folks are out there and they look and they go, their first step in, in going and buying a new home is they're heading out to start shopping. And then you find out, I, I, and it doesn't matter to me, it doesn't matter what the process is or what the, the size of the loan is. I, I've seen this happen with very small uh, uh, homes or, or first time buyers looking 200, 300, 400,000. I just had this recently with a person buying a $2 million home and they had not gotten pre approved before they got made an offer. They're offered, they go through the whole negotiation process only to find out that they can't get approved that they can't get the program or the product that they wanted because of a mortgage late that was 10, me- 10 months ago. $2 million home. They've gone through the whole negotiation process. They, and everything that they had qualified for the, for the purchase. Except that one little ugly mortgage late that, came, that showed up there 10 months ago. And they, if they had spent some time or d- had a discussion with a mortgage banker prior to making the offers, prior to go in, they might have found that there were some other alternatives, some solutions that could have solved that problem for them. So the question, that, that's just one example of why getting pre-approved is so important. In many markets across the country, the amount of buyers searching for dream homes greatly outnumbers the amount of homes for sale. And this has led to a competitive marketplace where buyers often need to stand out. One way to show you are serious about buying your dream home, again, get pre-qualified. That's step one, get pre-approved. That's even better, but what about pre-underwritten? where the file is actually underwritten and you've got a conditional approval prior to ever going shopping. That's a big plus for your real estate professional when they go in and they can make an offer and say, we don't have a loan contingency on this file. It's already been approved. All we need is an appraisal to add to it. We need a purchase contract to add to it. And we need title insurance. Once those things are done, and those can be done pretty quickly, you can go move forward and remove remove that set of contingencies. Now, there may be other contingencies in the negotiations between buyer and seller, but those are gone. Even if you're in a market that's not as competitive, knowing your budget will give you the confidence of knowing the dream home is within your reach. Here's an issue that I, I... frequently share with people. If you can afford a $350,000 house and you start looking at $500,000 homes, 
My assumption is, is you're not going to find the 350s that are going to look as good as that 500. Just plain and simple, there's a, there's, there's a reason that one is more expensive than the other. Well, with that being said, why shop the 500 if you've got a 350 budget? Why go drive around in a, in a Bentley when you can afford a Cadillac? Neither one of them are bad cars. But, dry, but go with what you can afford. Freddie Mac lays out the advantage of pre-approval in the My Home section of their website. And I'm just going to quote from them. It's highly recommended that you work with your lender to get pre-approved before you begin house hunting. Pre-approval will tell you how much home you can afford and can help you move faster with greater confidence in competitive markets, unquote. One of the many advantages of working with a local real estate professional is that many have relationships with lenders. So if you were to call our friends over at Gold Star, get pre-approved, even pre-underwritten, which they do, not everybody does that, pre-underwritten, they're going to suggest a real estate professional that's going to be that's got a track record of success of being vetted of communicate communication of client satisfaction of service within your neighborhood so that's why the big thing is get pre-approved first then you can have somebody that's working for you while that whole process is going on. Once you've selected a lender, you're going to need to fill out their loan application and provide them with important information regarding your credit, your debt, your work history, down payment, residential history. Freddie Mac describes the four C's that help determine the amount you will be qualified to borrow. Number one, capacity, your current and future ability to make payments. Number two, capital or cash reserves money savings investments you have that can be sold quickly for cash collateral the home or type of home that you would like to purchase and credit your credit history of paying bills and other debts on time getting pre-approved is one of the many steps that's going to show the home sellers that you're serious about buying and it often helps speed up the process once your offer has been accepted Bottom line here, many potential home buyers overestimate the down payment and credit scores needed to qualify for a mortgage. That's a big issue. Buyers overestimate the down payment and credit scores. Think about this. If you thought that you're out there looking and you think that you're, you can only get a $350,000 home, but you meet with a great mortgage banker, a great mortgage professional, and they look at all your information and say, you know something, if you want... 450,000 is within your budget even if you're thinking 350 or 450 is with what you qualify based on the budget we've discussed. Don't you think you're going to find a nicer property? I know the other issues are when you're looking at when you're doing this, what is the purchasing power? I've been sharing that information with a lot of folks lately. They don't contemplate what purchasing power is doing for them. And I'm going to share with just a, a couple of numbers. We've just, we've just started, um, we just re built some commercials about this for the radio broadcast so we can demonstrate this for you on a regular basis. What the buying power is just by a little bit of, of rates going up. I mean, think about that. $100,000 can be the difference in your buying power from one loan to another just based on interest rates. Say you want the same $200,000 or $2,000 a month payment at, you know, say three and a half or 4%, you might be looking at a $450,000 house, but historic numbers are six and a half percent interest. If we looked at that six and a half percent interest, your buying power is going to be significantly different. It's going to be significantly lower. So think about those different issues that go into play as to what you can afford when you want to be do making that purchase. There might be times that you say, you know something, I think that even though I may not be ready right now to make this purchase, it's in my best interest to do it right now because interest rates, they're going to be going up. It's just a, a fact of what's going on right now in our, in our marketplace. Interest rates are going up 
And there's not a whole lot you can do about that part of it. There, I mean, I, I've, since we've been on, on the broadcast this morning, I've seen it come across my screen three times where rates have changed already today. Three times they've changed already today. So if, if you're thinking about buying or selling, well, interest rates are a big component of all of that. And you need to be looking at those numbers to see what makes sense for you, what makes sense for your family. When is the right time for you? All of those are issues that you just have to contemplate. I don't know the answer to them. Only you're going to know those answers for your family, what's going to make sense for your family. I can give you the information of what you need to be looking for. That's the beauty of what we do here on Ron Siegel Radio. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, worst things to buy during the holidays. Is it too late for that debt consolidation loan? We're going to talk about all of that and more. Remember, you can reach us anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, the replay is available, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We will be back in just a few. Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564. Complete a three-minute complimentary survey, and the area-trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Isn't it time you found out the truth about FHA-insured home equity conversion? No, it's not your grandfather's reverse mortgage. This just may be the finest financial planning strategy available for all homeowners of retirement age. Helping protect what you've earned is the job of your board of directors with continued education. Major research has shown that using a HECM will significantly enhance the success rate of a retiree's portfolio and legacy. Please allow us to educate. For your complimentary consultation, call Jay Kaplan at 949-300-3855. That's 949-300-3855. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity Opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and one 866 You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. 
1990, the word on wealth segment today being brought to you by askaboutreversemortgages.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Well, I guess I got the wrong script in there, don't I? Credit Sanitizer, I guess, is the one that we've got, we're supposed to be doing that one. Creditsanitizer.com. Yeah, you've got a bad credit report. What are you doing about it? Interesting. Credit sanitizer. Worst things to buy during the holidays is our subject today. What are the worst things to buy? The, the, the reason that we come up with the worst things to buy, there are times when we know that items are going to be promoted. I used to, to be in the import-export business, and we always knew that don't try to go and buy a deal on back-to-school items in time for back to school because so many of the companies, so many of the retailers put those out as a loss leader at back to school time. They just want to get people into their businesses. So you don't sell those items at that time because you're going to look foolish with it. But here's some items that you don't want to be buying at the holiday time. Bedding. Not the right time. January is when you're going to have the white sales, and you can save as much as 50% by waiting until January to buy bedding. Not the best time. Broadway tickets. You can get two tickets for the price of one during Broadway week in January if you like that item, if you like doing that. Other places around the country might have the same issues. Cars. Right now is a good time to be buying the cars. I had a chat with my friend Jim Kane the other day, and he's a, deal, a an independent dealer of cars. He said, you know, you start getting into September and then up through the middle up part of October, car prices are dropping right now. You get a good deal on the car. But start going into November, December, well, you start getting into the holidays and people are looking for cars. You're not going to get as good a deal on them at that time period. Uh, travel. A lot of times for the holidays, you're not getting the deals on travel. Probably not the best time to buy. Exercise equipment. You might see a few sales on fitness gear and equipment in December, but January is when the real deals appear, and you know that you can buy them used by February. Just a thought right there. Furniture. Again, it's not the item that you're looking for because People just realize it's not the best time of year for those items. Holiday decorations, January again is your best time to buy holiday decorations and put it away. Now I have a, a, a relative that goes and buys all of their, their new ski gear. And, you know, obviously we don't have a, the greatest market in the world for that in California. But she goes and buys ski gear for the family, usually in March or April. Nobody's going to recognize whether it's last year's models or not. Just a an idea. Luggage. If you need to replace a beat up, roll on. That's been tossed around too many times by airline baggage handlers. March is the best time to buy luggage. Mattresses. You don't expect Santa to shove a mattress down your chimney. But if you were thinking about giving your holiday guests something more comfortable than a f futon to sleep on, Consider buying a mattress during November or December. You might want to reconsider. You'll save as much as 70% by waiting until Memorial Day sales in May to buy mattresses. Memorial Day is the right time. So there's just a few of those different items for you to contemplate the worst time to buy or worst things to buy during the holiday season. Just uh, just a little bit of a thought there for you. Get a lot of folks chatting, and we've been, we've been promoting or, or evangelizing, I guess is probably a better term, that people should be taking a look at their finances, and especially right now. I mean, why not take a look at your finances at this time of year when many people are thinking, you know, some, wouldn't it be nice to skip a mortgage payment right around the holiday time? And do that with a debt consolidation loan. Get rid of all of your old debts. Now, I am not going to say to you that I'm a proponent of going and taking a new mortgage so that you can get your debts paid off before the holidays and then go run up all those credit card bills again. That is not what we're talking about when we're chatting about these different items right now. But how about cons looking into and seeing if it makes sense to consolidate your debts at this time of year, 
Yeah, I know you're getting ready for the holidays and your thought process. Kids are going back to school, so maybe this month, maybe the beginning of next month, is a good time to take a look at this. Now, we looked at the Freddie Mac mortgage market rate, mortgage market survey rate, 3.44%. And I've plugged that in to see what it would look like. What is your household household rent rate? Easy for me to say this morning, right? What is your ho- blended household rate? <laughs> blended household rate. And how do you come up with what your blended rate is on what you're paying in your household for different items? And I'm just going to go through and, and throw some numbers that could have been numbers that they're, they're fairly accurate based on where you might have been where you are today. So I'm just going to say that what if you had a 4% interest rate on your first mortgage? I know it was 39 was what the Freddie Mac rate was a year ago, 3.9. So I just round that off to 4%. And if you're like a traditional household, maybe you bought a house, then you used a home equity line of credit so that you didn't pay mortgage insurance, that one there probably right now is right around 5.5% on the purchase money home equity lines of credit. Auto loan, it's pretty common for people to have auto loans. I'm just going to go with what the national average numbers are on auto loans, yours may be better, yours may be worse, but four years, 13,000 roughly per loan, 5.95 on one of them, 6.95 on the other. Three credit cards is the norm, totaling about $15,350, $450. And I just used three different rates, pulled them out of the air, 15, 20, 30% interest. So you get some at each different level. And one student loan, 47,000 is about the average that we see right now, 7% interest rate. That means if you put all those things together and weigh them out so that obviously your home loan is going to be a higher percentage or have higher weight than a credit card, home loan of 400000 as opposed to a credit card at 5000 you put all that together, your blended rate is 5.05%. Blended household interest rate, 5.05. Now, what if you saw some appreciation like most of us have in our real estate in the last year? Good chance that you saw that just like everybody else. Maybe the time is now to get rid of that home equity line of credit. Maybe you can roll all of these loans, these debts into one new loan. Now, if you take all the numbers that I just read to you and put them together, you've got a total of $564,000 in total household debt. And again, the blended interest rate there is 5.05. You take minimum payments on everything and you say you got about a $4,000 monthly debt service. All your debts are going to average out. And I didn't add in uh, taxes, you know, for your house. I didn't add in insurance for your house. These are just items that are fixed rate items that are on your household debt. So I said $4,000. Now, what if you take that 5.05? And remember, your house, your mortgage is at 4%. What if you raise it to four and a quarter? And people look at me and say, Ron, you're nuts. Why would I raise it to four and a quarter when I'm paying four right now? Because you're not paying four. You're paying 5.05. That's where the big difference is. That's where your misconception is. And say you raise that to four and a quarter, if that's what it costs you to get a a cash out refinance right now, you are going to save, your family is going to save $1,200 a month. $1,200 a month. What do you do with that money? No, don't go rack it up and spend more bills. Take and pay it toward the mortgage. That way your car loan that you had four years left on is not going to be a 30-year loan. You're putting part of, and here's, here's the idea here. See, because you've got a four-year, those two four-year car loans are roughly three and a three, little over $300 a month each. So if you take that 1230 take 600 of it and put it into a savings account, just call it new car account. And you take 600 of it and you put it toward your principal on your mortgage. Your mortgage balance is going to continue to drop faster than it would otherwise because you're making almost, in essence, you're making a, an extra half a payment every year or every month. I'm sorry, every month. Think about that. 
your balance will drop much quicker, and then you're setting aside that extra money to buy a new car without having to have a loan on it. Because think about this, you got to talk to your tax professionals. In most likelihood, the interest rate that you're paying on this new loan is going to be tax advantaged. Again, talk to your tax professional. Make sure that in your situation that works, but you're going to get a tax deduction for it. Do you get a tax deduction for the interest you pay on credit cards? No. Do you get a tax deduction for the interest you get pay on your auto loans? Probably not. If it's used for business, maybe, but probably not. Do you get a tax deduction for your student loans? Probably not. Again, all these things you have to confirm with your tax professional. But in most instances, the home loan is a tax deduction. So that four and a quarter is going to be somewhat less than that, probably right around three to 3.1, depending upon your tax situation, is going to be the real expense. But those dollars, that $1,230 a month, that is real savings to you and to your family. Contemplate that idea. And if you want some real numbers of what this exactly means to you and your family, just give me a call. Our, our team will do that for you absolutely free. No obligation. You don't, have to, you don't have to do anything with us. We just do that as a service for you because we appreciate you. We appreciate you listening to Ron Siegel Radio. We appreciate you setting that preset to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Steve, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.